For other sieges of the town see Siege of Groenlo. The siege of Grol in 1627 was a battle between the army of the Dutch Republic commanded by Frederick Henry, Prince of Orange and the Spanish-controlled fortified city of Grol. During the Eighty Years' War in 1627, the Spanish army led by Hendrik van den Berg came to relieve Grol, but it came too late. The siege lasted from 20 July until 19 August 1627, resulting in the surrender of the city to the Army of the United Provinces. During the siege, a 16-kilometer-long circumvallation line was made around Grol in order to prevent the enemy from leaving and to prevent liberation of the city from the outside. Ambrosio Spinola had used a similar technique during the siege of Breda. The success at Grol provided the first serious victory on land for the Republic after the Twelve Years' Truce. About Grol, even though it was only a small city, Grol was of military strategic importance. Grol was a flourishing trade center, well fortified and armed, and it had a strategic position on the Hanseatic trade route to Germany. The area around Grol was marshy and difficult to reach, and anyone in control of the city was in control of the region. Morris of Nassau had taken Grol in 1597, after an unsuccessful try in 1595, and Spinola retook it in 1606. Morris tried to take Grol again, later during the same year, again unsuccessful, after which Grol remained in Spanish hands until 1627. Grol provided a defensible place to garrison troops and a free haven for Spanish raids. Heavy taxes and import duties were collected here from the whole of the Actahoc and Valua, which provided a steady source of income for the Spanish war treasury. Together with the fortified towns of Oldenzaal, Breedevort and Lingen, Grol could provide a base for attacking the Republic from the east. This is why the States General chose to invest in an army to capture Grol, instead of concentrating solely on sea battle with the Spaniards. Prelude the Dutch army of Frederick Henry, totaling over 15,000 footmen and 4,000 cavalry, travelled by foot and boat via the Rhine and unloaded behind Emmerich. As was common practice in those days, the army consisted mainly of mercenaries from all over Europe, including Scottish, English, High German, Frisian and French troops. The army arrived at Grol on 20 July 1627. Immediately all major roads leading to Grol were blocked by frontrunners of the cavalry. 1,000 carts brought gunpowder, bullets, 75 guns, food and all the equipment necessary for besieging and taking over a city. Circumvallation the next day, thousands of soldiers and hired workers began to speedily build a continuous hearthen wall around Grol, 10 feet high, 16 kilometers long. Wooden and earthen ramparts, entrenchments and other fortifications were built along the line, including fortified defenses for the troops. Frederick Henry used to let troops of the same nationality work together, so that an English fortification was built by and for the English troops, as well as one for the French, the Frisians and one for the troops from Holland. Guns were placed strategically so that the circumvallation line could be defended from all sides. The reach of the guns placed in Grol was taken into account. They couldn't hit the line which was two kilometers from the city. In just ten days the work was done, though the circumvallation was continually reinforced during the siege. Frederick Henry was aware that a large Spanish army was stationed in the south of the Netherlands, commanded by Ondrik van den Berg, to distract the Spanish army and delay its arrival, and thus avoid a battle in the open field where he would be outnumbered. Frederick Henry carried out a feigned attack, he sent a part of his own army towards the German town of Goff. Neighboring villages around Grol were taken by commanders to prevent the Spanish obtaining a foothold in the neighborhood. Sentries were placed all around the area and supply lines were set up to the veterans at Fien to feed and supply the massive army now lying around Grol. The siege, 
The situation in GROL Mathis Dulcan, a season and wily commander, was the head of the Spanish army occupying GROL. He had available to him 1,200 foot soldiers and around 100 cavalry, commanded by Lambert Veriken. Food and supplies are plenty. Dulcan ordered his troops to reinforce the defenses of the already fortified city, and specifically, by musket or cannonball, to hurt or damage the enemy any which way. With the circumvallation line ready, GROL was being bombarded by the Dutch army while groups of Dutch, English, French troops dug at Prussia's towards the city. Damage done to the city's defences were continually repaired by the besieged. However, 200 incendiary fireballs were shot into the city, causing heavy damage to buildings and people. Dulcan himself was wounded in his shoulder by a musket bullet and gave command to Veriken. Veriken and his cavalry raided the attackers' positions, mainly the trench digging positions and the rampart of Ernst Casimir of Nassau Dietz, without causing many casualties. In GROL, due to the carelessness of a soldier, two barrels of gunpowder exploded, causing 40 bystanders to perish. Activities outside GROL Meanwhile, the English digging team had managed to first reach the canal which lay around GROL and was supplied by the river Slinger. In order to facilitate a crossing, the lock north of the city was blown up, resulting in the lowering of the water in the canal by 5 feet which left just nine feet. After that, the Dutch army tried to cross the canal by building a dam, but they were under heavy gunfire from GROL and the dam was fully destroyed by burning oil poured from the city. Finally, with the support of two artillery pieces the attackers managed to build two dams, although casualties were great, including two English officers, Ram and Proud. The arrival of Van den Berg in the meantime, Van den Berg and his formidable Spanish army had arrived near Groenlo after taking in another 1,800 German mercenaries, now outnumbering the army of his cousin, Frederick Henry. However, due to lack of funding they were short on supplies and had arrived too late for a head-to-head -head battle in the open field. They fired their guns for GROL to hear that help had come. After a failed plan to cut the supply lines of the Dutch army, due to quarrels between Spanish and Italian troops, he decided to attack the circumvallation line and try to break through to GROL. His attack on the Scottish rampart seemed to succeed at first but a fierce counter-attack by Officer Mora drove the Spaniards away, erasing all hope for a victory for Van den Berg. Negotiations Frederick Henry now tried to negotiate with Dulcan by convincing him the Spaniards outside the city could no longer save him. Dulcan, who had healed from his wound, proudly denied their entreaties. The siege went on. English troops crossed the canal and managed to put a mine under one of Grohl's outer defences. The mine was blown up on August 18, creating a huge hole in the defences. English troops rushed in, climbing the city's earthen walls behind, but Veriken lay waiting with hundreds of muskets and burning tar, and he repelled the English three times, causing a massacre. Dulcan, however, intelligent enough in knowing that soon his city would be attacked from three sides, and realizing that he was short on men and guns, called for an armistice and sent for negotiators. The treaty a treaty like the one used after the siege of Breda, disambiguation needed, was signed three days later, handing the city to the Army of the Republic. The Spanish troops in GROL and its citizens were allowed to leave, taking arms and loot with them, but only two guns could be taken. Frederick Henry loaned 200 carts for the defenders to carry their equipment, as was negotiated. He stationed foot soldiers and horsemen in GROL as to defend it from future attacks. The complete circumvallation line was destroyed and all trenches filled to prevent them from being used by future attackers. Archbishop of Utrecht Philippus Rovinius, who resided in the city during the siege, was allowed to leave. 
GROL was now under the Republic and would remain so until the end of the war. The victory was celebrated greatly in the Republic. The Spaniards had finally been beaten after many losses. Hugo de Groot wrote all the details of the battle in his Grola Obsidio, and Joost van den Vondel wrote a 738-verse ode to the siege. The sayings O Vasta as Grohl came into being, as a reference to the difficulty of taking the city. Present day, in the town of Groenlo, old GROL, cannons and some parts of the old bulwarks have been restored for historic and tourism purposes. Live reenactments of the events of 1627 take place on a regular basis, drawing sizable crowds, these are known as the slag on Grohl. In recent years, more and more parts of the original circumvallation line are being rediscovered. It is being discussed whether the full 16-kilometer long line can be restored. During 2006 and 2007, the Calixtus Church in Groenlo has undergone a major renovation, including the placement of a new stained glass window depicting the siege of Groenlo of 1627. The church has survived all of the six sieges that Groenlo has been through during the 16th and 17th century. After the siege of 1627, the states general paid for the breaking of a church window that occurred during the siege. In the hot Dutch summer of 2003, an ultralight plane discovered mysteriously green plants in an otherwise barren cornfield. It just so happened to be the outlines of the French rampart of 1627. The canals around the rampart change the soil or water flow, making the plants stay green. The English rampart was found earlier near Levelder and has been fully restored and it can be visited. In 2008, the siege of GROL will be reenacted from 17 until the 19th of October. Groenlo, influenced by Munster and having been under Spanish Catholic control during many years, remains a Catholic enclave in a predominantly Protestant region.